Hey guys, this is ICCE523, and welcome to episode 3 of So You Want to Learn How to Mod. Uh, this episode, we are going to focus on flares, which, in my opinion, are one of the more annoying things to work on when you're modding Rings of Rods buses, but in any event, it's, uh, it's important that you know how to use, uh, how, to, how to work with flares, because it, it, it's an important part of your bus. Not to be confused with flare bindings. Um, flares are basically just lights, whereas flare bindings are lighted objects. So, as you can see, like this brake light here, you've got the actual lens that is illuminated. That is the flare binding, whereas that lighted part coming out of it, that's your flare. So we're going to focus on flares right now. And then I'll touch on the, the uh, flare bindings in a in a later episode. Uh, those warning lights too; those are just flares because you can't do um, flare bindings for warning lights. There we go. Stop arms, flares. Uh, these dash lights as well are flares. So there are a lot of stuff you can do with players. Uh, so it, it is a good thing to know. So um, this episode will be two parts here. Um, first, I'm going to go through the anatomy of flares, how to work with them, and then I'll do a couple of examples of, uh, of editing flares, and then I'll, I'll create a new one. You can see how that works. So that's how this is going to run. So uh, first thing, of course. Um, you can go to your truck file uh, format thingy, whatever you want to call it that I talked about in the first episode, and there is a section on flares. Yay! So um, these right here are the different types of flares you can do. You can uh, do a headlight flare, brake light, uh, left blinker, right blinker, um, reverse and then user controlled lights those are really important because uh, that's th those are what you'll use when you're making um, when you're making like warning lights and stop arms and that sort of thing um, so there are two important areas that you'll have to be familiar with when you're working with flares and the first one is the flares 2 section in the truck file and this is where you'll find all your um, flares applied and um, and the positioning for them and all that fun stuff. So this can all be found in the flares section. Uh, if you scroll down, there's a flares 2, which it's basically the same thing as flares 1, except um, after your Y offset, there'll be a Z offset as well which can be kind of handy which is why I prefer using flares too you don't want to go crazy with the Z offset though because if you if you um, if you make the Z offset too big it just messes everything up so you you can use it but we'll go into what that is in a second so um, so I'll put this off to the side and I just lost my flare section let's get that back yeah there we go Okay, so, anatomy of a flare. So we'll just take the first one here. These are your headlight flares. Uh, first number here is your reference node. That's the order. We're going to get into some math here. So for you guys who have gone through, like, plotting points on a graph and that sort of thing in math class, that'll that's going to really help you out with, you, with this. So, um... Actually, I'm going to pull up paint. I think this is going to help. So, um, so the first number is your reference node, which basically is an origin. So you have an X, Y graph. For those of you who have gone through this, this is your um, 
x-axis and this is your y-axis. Uh, and then the origin is where the two meet. So that is your reference node. It's the origin of your graph. So right here, 0, 0. And I'll take you through how to figure out where these nodes are in a second. So um, the second number is your x-axis node, which determines the direction that the x-axis goes in. And then um, your y-axis node is, determines the direction that your y-axis goes in. Um, and then you have your offsets, which how, how far the uh, the flare is from the origin in the x direction and then um, y offset how far the flare is from the origin in the y direction so um, so those are the one those are the ones you're going to want to mess with the most when you're positioning flares there is also in flares too there's a flare z offset which um, I'm they don't, I don't think you really have learned about the z-axis yet, but basically what the z-axis is, where's my paint? Did I close out paint? Oh, there it is. Um, so you have your y-axis going up, your z-axis going out, and then your x-axis going to the right, and then your z-axis is at a 90 degree angle to both the y and the x axis so in this case it would be coming out at you so again you probably shouldn't mess with that too much because it really the the bigger you make your z offset value the worse your flare is going to look because it just it makes it look like it moves around a lot when you're rotating around the bus and it's just it's not good so you can mess with that a little bit but don't make it too big or it really causes problems um, and then go on to your type uh, we, we went through this before you can make headlight brake light left blinker right blinker reverse light you just use F B L R capital R and U um, so just whatever flare you're making uh, control number this is for when you're doing a uh, user controlled light and um and that's uh these are all if you're not doing a user control light you'll just put a fight uh, minus one in here but like the uh the warning lights for example those are user controlled lights so you want to put a control number on those so in this case the uh the red warning lights are control number two and the um the yellow warning lights are control number one. Now the default control for those, if you if you don't have an input map, like I have an input map, so I, uh, I, I modified my input map, so I have different controls for these. But if you don't have a modified input map, a flare that's set to control one will activate when you hit control plus the number one. And... Um, and two control two three control three and so on and so forth so that those are control numbers and um, blink delay I don't really mess with this a whole lot I'll just put it to zero for the most part um, and um, I'll go through that I like to control my flares through the material file which we'll go through in a second um, flare size this is the next number so the, uh, this actually this controls the size of your flare so if you want it to make it bigger you would increase this number if you want to make it smaller you could uh, decrease that number and then finally the material name the material that you're um, that you're drawing from to create the flare um, these are all defaults because those are like, those are, yeah, those are reverse lights. So it's just using the default reverse light material. Um, but like down here for your red, more, uh, for your warning lights, that's your, that's, that's the material that it's drawing from for the warning lights. 
and uh, we'll go through that next. So that is the other part of a flare, is um, the material file, which in this bus, uh, if you don't know which material file has your flares in it, you can just, we'll go back to the truck file. Just go through each of the material files until you find, like, I want to edit this light right here, so I'm going to go through each of the material files until I find that material. But in, in this case, I already know what it is. It's, uh, it's flares.material. Okay, so this is where you actually create your flare. Um, you've got your material, and then this is your material name. This is the name that's referenced in the truck file. So this is our, um, this, is, this would be a, this is actually an interior um, turn signal, the, the green arrow that goes on the dash. Um, I don't really mess with this stuff a whole lot. The important part here is the, uh, the texture unit. And, uh, so then you have your texture, which again, a texture is just a, uh, a picture file. You can, so you can make it any picture you want. And, um, this is an animated texture, which means there are, there are multiple, textures in this string so it's going to go through each of these textures and then um, and then go back to to the to the beginning it'll it'll re so it'll go through this texture then this texture then it'll go back to the beginning and it'll keep running through it uh, this one it doesn't make a big difference being animated because you can just do like a regular texture and just have one there um, But these, these are both the same texture, so you're not going to see any difference when it goes from one to the other. But that does become important when you're doing, like, turn signals and warning lights and that sort of thing. So, like, if I scroll down to the... Where is it? Okay, so here is a yellow warning light. I don't want to go into that yet. Get, a, get an LED one because those are a little easier. Okay, so uh, here is a red warning light for um, which uh, this uh, this is an LED warning light. So this is this is your material name. Ignore all this. I'm not really sure what all that does, but we got our animated texture, and these are all our textures that it's going to run through to create this flare. So you got off, red, off, red off and guess what alternating between off and red what does that do that creates a strobing effect so you're going from off to red to off to red to off and then there's a string of offs this is just so um, when the other you got two red warning lights so when one is activated the other one's off so that that's what that is so if I wanted to change this to a solid um, um, LED warning light, I would just go through and get rid of the offs between the reds. Okay, but these are these are all the textures that the flare will run through that that it'll run through to create that that texture. Then this number at the end controls the speed of the flare. So um and this is in seconds, so right now it'll run through all of these textures in 0 0.78 seconds. Um, so if I wanted to speed up my warning lights, um, I would just decrease this number, like I put it at like 0.5, make it run through all of the textures in, uh, in half a second, speed up the light a little bit. And if I want to slow it down, I could increase this, put it maybe at like one second. Um, 
so that it would take a little longer, uh, so the the, uh, the flare would be a little bit slower. So, uh, so that's basically it. Um, so now I'm going to do a couple of examples here. Oh, I did want to show. Uh, so the uh, the incandescent warning lights are a little more complicated because you got some flares in here that uh, to create an incandescent warning light, you have to have flares. You've got your off flare off, but then you have like a a a lighter version of the flare and then a darker version of the flare to simulate how you know it's not super bright when it first starts but then you build up to that bright point and then you have it um, tailing off again so um, so this is an incandescent warning light you have your your offs here and you have your red 3 which is a faint red red 2 gets a little bit brighter and then you've got your full-on um, red and then um, your red 2 is starting to fade out again and then red 3 you're fading out even more and then you go back to off so that's that's how that works it's a little more complicated but uh, but yeah that's that's how we do it so the first example I want to go through because this is something that I get asked about a lot is um, is how to change the flash pattern of your warning lights so I'm gonna show you obviously all of my LED warning lights in uh, for North Syracuse are strobing so I'm gonna show you how to uh, take a strobing warning light and make it non strobing so just a straight back and forth so you've all seen this before but this is a 2014. It has a strobing, has a strobing warning light. So we're gonna go ahead and make this non-strobing. That was a 2014 I spawned, so we'll open the 2014 one truck file, and we want to see what um, material is controlling the warning lights. So we scroll down to our flares 2 section to look for anything that looks like it has to do with a warning light. These are all labeled so it makes it really nice. Um, so here are your rear red and yellow warning lights and here are your front red and yellow warning lights. So these are all the materials that, um, that are controlling those lights. So then what we're going to do as we're going to open our flares material file it's still going okay good <laughs> didn't want that to stop that stopped on me once I don't know why um, anyway <laughs> so we're going to open our flares material file and we're going to scroll down to that material an easy way to do it is just control F so as it was BVV8 S1544 is it case sensitive okay Okay, I don't know why that's not working, but whatever. I know what's in here. <laughs> Where's the five four fours? Okay. So um, how these work is you gotta you gotta one the five four four is basically just I tried it when I first made this pack I made separate warning light flares for each bus so that that's why that bus number is there but you can pretty much this is this is flare one and this is two so uh, there's a there's a separate flare for each side so you can get that back and forth pattern there 
So this is um, this is your yellow warning light number one, and this is your yellow warning light number two under here. So if I want to make this um, non-strobing, like I said before, I just want to get rid of every off that is between uh, a yellow. So this is an off. I'm just going to switch it to a yellow. Yellow off this will be a yellow yellow off yellow yellow off okay so um there are there's 16 of these textures total so eight of them are for where when the flare is activated and eight of them are for where the flare is off so i want to make sure i have eight yellows I might need to change that off there. I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I need an eighth one here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now there are eight yellows and eight offs. So this will be a solid yellow. Um, LED warning light now. So we're going to go down here and do the same thing to number two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's your eight offs. And you'll end up changing four of these because there's four yellows and four offs that you have to change. So that's that. Now, so now our yellows are uh, are changed to just a solid LED uh, back and forth pat flashing pattern. Now we got to do the same thing to the reds. So we got our red off. We'll change this to a red. Change this to a red. Why am I doing that? Change this to a red. And change this to a red. Make sure we got eight and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reds. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight offs. Okay, so that one's good. And then we'll scroll down to the last one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight offs. We got a red off. We'll change that to a red. Change that to a red. Change that to a red. And change that to a red. Okay. So that's it. We just changed our strobing warning lights to... Uh, incandescent so I'm going to insert this back into the pack let it compress make sure it finishes compressing before you uh, before you load your game or it'll cause issues if you do start the game before um, before it finishes compressing just exit out of it, do a regen, and then uh, and then reload it. Takes a little while with the North Syracuse pack just because I got so many files in there. Oh, I forgot something. So we put the flares file back in there. Actually, no, we don't need to read put the truck file in there because I didn't change anything in the truck file so we're good there never mind 2014 and we spawned 555 last time let's spawn 560 or 559 why not Okay, so now we can see that we no longer have our strobing warning light pattern. If I can 
hit OK and actually get the bus to spawn. It's now just a back and forth LED. Okay. So that's that. That's kind of the lesser complicated thing I wanted to go through. Now we are going to create a new flare. And um, I figured something kind of neat to do would be to put a light next to the entrance door to... Uh, that illuminates when uh, when we're loading so that's what we're gonna do so the first thing I want to do is uh, is grab a texture for it blend maybe This is easier said than done sometimes. Go to the sound off uh, website. This uh, a lot of the lights that you find on a school bus are uh, are sound off lights. So this website usually yeah check this out. So I can just use this one. Let's do this. So I'm going to copy that image and then I'm going to open up the skins of one of my buses here, which are all in here. Let's do what bus do we want to do? We go for the, the newbie of the fleet. We'll do 613. Okay, so got paint.net open. We're going to paste this, and it's going to be huge because that picture is huge. Um, we don't want to, we want to keep the picture the same size, so I'm going to do. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do a new thing here. And there's this cool cool tool that lets you um, select circles. The uh, ellipse select. So um Similar to the rectangle select, but uh, it works in a circle, so it can be helpful when you're adding um, light textures like this one. Just want to make sure I don't have any of that transparency in there. That's good. So we're going to copy that and we'll paste it on here. Now I want to keep this as circular as I can. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and that will take the vertical and the horizontal at the same, at the same time. So it keeps this in a circular shape. Still pretty big. Okay. 
rotate this back to its original orientation and save it. And we're going to put this into our bus pack. All right, so now we got the uh, the texture onto the skin. So now we need the flare to light it up. So I'm going to go into the truck file. which for this we, we'll do 2018-1 and we want a white flare for this so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start take one of the reverse lights They're up here somewhere. Did they go up there? They are. Um, just grab this one. I'm going to bring it down to the bottom. Uh, make a new label for it. The semicolon, I'll just call it a loading light. Okay, now, um, first thing we need to do is find the node that we want to use for the origin for this new flare. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to spawn our bus, 613, which you should be able to see our texture on there now. Yep, there it is. And I showed this to you once before, but we're going to go to debug and show node numbers. So, you want to pick a node that's pretty close to the texture that you're trying to put a flare on, but you also want to make sure that you have a node that you're going to be able to, to determine an X and Y direction pretty easily on. So. Uh, Like if I chose this 95 here as the origin, I could do 99 as the x direction and 94 as the x direction, as the y direction, and then so that, that would make it pretty easy to place because anything going the x direction would just be going along the body of the bus and the, the y direction would be going up and down. So that would be a pretty good one to choose. Um, so I think I'm going to do that, 94, uh, 95 is the origin, uh, 99 as the X direction, and 94 as the Y direction. So those will be my first three numbers here, um, 95, and of course I forgot what the second number was already, it, it happens to me all the time. It's not going to matter which one I spawn because they're all the same node numbers. Yeah, still a work in progress on the reflective tape there. There's a 99, okay. 95. 
99, 94. Okay, so now I got my origin and my axes. So, now I need numbers for my offsets, which, let me load, I probably shouldn't close this game out because it takes forever to load in every time. Okay, so um, so we determined our axis here. So the positive x direction is going to be towards node 99. So you can see we're actually going to be a little negative in the x here because our light is a little bit behind node 95, uh, 95 here. So we're going to have to go to the left. But uh, we did. When we chose node 99, we determined that the x positive x direction was going to be to the right. So our x value is actually going to be a little bit negative. Um, and then our y value is going to be positive because um, we chose 94. We determined the positive y direction is going to be up. And since we're above 95 there, so, so we're going to try to I'm gonna keep this open this time. We're going to try some uh, values that might be close to what we need here. So our x direction we know is going to be negative. So I'm going to try, I don't know, I'm just picking it. Picking it. it doesn't really matter what you pick here, you just want to see where this player is going to show up. So I'll do like negative 0.1 maybe. And then positive, we'll do positive 0 0.5, maybe. And then I'm just putting the value at 0 right now. Uh, this is not going to be a reverse light. We, this is, this is going to be a user-controlled light, so I'm going to put a U there. And for our control number, if we want this to, uh, to come on with our reds, when we open the door and we're loading students, well, our red is uh, up here. Our, uh, our red warning lights are on control number two, so we're going to want to put this loading light on control number two, so that it'll come on with the reds. Uh, no blink delay. And, um... We'll leave that at 0.8 for now if we need to adjust the size. Uh, we'll uh, mess with that later. Our material, I'm going to create a new material for this. Uh, we don't want to use the default material because it doesn't know it's a reverse light anymore. If we put it as a user controlled light, the default's not going to work, so we need a new material to do. Yeah, I don't think you actually need this track, but I'll just put it in there because everything else has it. Uh, tracks loading and we're gonna have to create that material it's not in there right now I'll go through that in a second okay so to create this material let's go into flares um I'm going to copy this. Put our name in here. And then our texture, we don't want it to be off. We want to find, I believe there's a texture in here for a white light somewhere. Maybe like BBV white or something. BBV white, is that what I want? Yeah, that'll work. So 
so we'll just change this to BBB white. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that alone. doesn't really matter what the timing is because you're just going from white to white anyway. So it's just going to be a solid texture. Alright, so we created our material. And then we uh, applied it in the truck file. This is the right one, right? Yep, there it is. I'll wait for that to finish compressing and then I'll put the other one in there. Any time now. Seriously? There we go, finally. <laughs> Hopefully this one doesn't take so long. Or maybe it will. So let's load our bus and see what happened. I think I see it. Yep, there it is. Um, you can see it's very faint, but it is there. That's because it's too far into the body right now, which is why I like having that view direction option. I can push it out a little bit. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the Z so that we can actually see it better. I'm going to assume the Z is going to be positive. I'm going to try making that like a 0 0.5. That might actually be too big. In fact, I, I might want to... What do I got for some of these other ones? Actually, the warning light, those ones are set to 0 0.55, so that might not be so bad. If 
probably taking longer because I've got the recording software going right now. Okay, it's done. So, hopefully, you'll be able to see the light better now. Yeah, there it is. You can actually see the uh, the doors are blocking it a little bit too, so that's not helping. Um, so we'll need to move it. And obviously, it's way too high, so the Y value is going to have to come down. And it's close, but we'll need to move it a little bit more to the left. So I'm going to do the X direction first because if I get away get it away from the doors a little more it looks like it's gonna be easier to see so let's try to make this like a zero point negative zero point two Which may be too much, but if it is, we can scale it back. happened Okay, it doesn't look like much of anything happened, really. That's weird. Um, so... I'm gonna make I'm gonna up this by a lot. We're gonna I'm gonna try to make it like seven zero point seven five. See if I can get it to move. If you change your number and it doesn't look like anything happened, just it probably means you didn't change your number by enough.
this is the really annoying part about doing the flares. <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Oh, you know what's happening too that I'm noticing? You're noticing that the flare's disappearing as the doors are opening. We chose our Y node. As node number 99. Node 99 rotates when the doors open. Actually, oh, it comes out way over here. So that was a bad choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a stationary node that was stupid on my part. So we're going to use node 96 instead for the X direction. Yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's my bad. I just realized that. So 99, we'll use 96 for the X direction. <laughs> I'm like, why is my node disappearing when the doors open? It doesn't make any sense. Well, duh, because you chose a node that's on the door and rotates when the door opens. There we go. Okay, so now we can actually see our node. Um, it obviously needs to come back to the right. <laughs> so, you went a little crazy there. Um, with the 0.75, obviously needs to come back to the right a little bit. So we're going to make it, we'll try 0 0.3, see what that does. And I'll bring it down too, because I know it needs to come down. Um, make it 0 0.15, see what that does. Oh, so funny story here. Well, not funny, but interesting story here on this picture. So, uh, this picture was taken at Leonard Bus Sales. I visited there in the summer of 2013. So that guy standing there, obviously I was escorted at all times when I was visiting there. So, so that guy, um, standing there is one of the guys that works at Leonard. Uh, his name was, uh, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say his name, but, um, 
but yeah, he, he went with me like everywhere I went while I was checking out the buses there. So he was just standing there watching me take pictures. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. That, that was a cool trip. I think that was the only picture I actually had that I got part of him in it, though, which was good. Okay, so let's see what we accomplished here. Okay, so now we're too low. We still need to come a little bit back to the right, so... Again, this is the fun part about doing flares, because it's just this over and over again trial and error. It's so much fun. <laughs> um, so we still need to come back to the right a little bit more, so we're going to do 0 0.2. We're too low now, so we're going to bump it up to 0 0.25, see if we can't get the height better. And... Drag it back into the pack, spawn it again, see what changed. Probably still won't be quite right. We're going to have to keep doing this over and over again until we finally get it where we want. But we're making progress. This is going to be done soon, I promise you. <laughs> this is why I don't like working on flares. And this is just one flare. Like, imagine if you were trying to fix, like, all of the flares on a bus because they're all off. And you've got, like, seven or eight different flares that you want to... you got to go through this process on, like, every single one of them. This is why I don't like flares. Have I, have I not made that clear? If I haven't made that clear yet, I do not like working on flares. I avoid it if I if at all possible. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh wow, that looks pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Um so I am a perfectionist, so uh obviously I'm not gonna be okay with that because it's still a little too high and a little too far to the left. So at this point, um, I'm just going to start doing one at a time because this is going to take a lot of fine tuning now that we have it down to this level. So let's try 0 0.175. Which will bring it just a little further to the, to the right there.
Okay, that could come a tiny bit more to the right. But it definitely needs to come down a little bit too, so. So we'll make this like 165 and try like 0.225 on this one, 220. See how close we are here. Um, and also, like I mentioned uh, earlier, you want to make the Z value as low as possible while still being able to see your flare. So I'm going to, well, I'm not going to mess with that yet. I'm going to do 0 0.22. I'm going to do 0 0.23. And this needs to be 170, I bet. There, that is. Now, you see how as you rotate around, well, no, no, you don't, but. As you rotate around the bus, the, the player kind of gets bigger and smaller. You can't see. This is probably a pretty good place to have it, have the Z. But, um, you really see it move more. 
You can kind of see it moving a little bit. But if your Z-value is too big, you'll really see that flare move a lot as you rotate around the bus. And it doesn't look great. So that's why you want to try and keep it. Obviously, if it goes too small, it'll it'll go into the body of the bus and you won't be able to see it. So you don't want that. But you want to make it as small as possible without that happening. So I think I think that's a good spot for it. Um... If you wanted to change the size, I think that's a pretty good size right there. Uh, you could just change this number. If I want to make it bigger, go bigger. If smaller, go smaller. Uh, if you want to do that, I think that's a good size for it the way it is. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to cut it here. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learn how much pain that you're, you're looking at when you, when you want to edit flares. <laughs> Uh, it's not fun. If there's a better way to do them out there, please, uh, please let me know, because <laughs> this is really painful, but, um, but it's the only way I know how to do it as of right now. So, um, so I hope this was helpful. Hope you learned something and, and stay tuned for the next episode. I think I'm going to do sounds next week. I think that'll be a good one. So, uh, thanks for watching.